I was I I I made I print I wrote out the list of all of our all of our shows because wow. I was really trying to figure out if this was the worst movie the worst? we watched. Because consensus in this house, Dan, <laughs> is that it is. <laughs> On a, along a lot of metrics, this was the worst movie we've done. Hey, watch him! Welcome to Hate Watching with Dan and Tony. I'm Dan. And I'm Tony. And we like to watch movies. Um, I can't... Usually. Uh, Usually. <laughs> um, each week we pick a different movie. This month we're doing schlockbusters. These are all big budget movies that probably wanted to be tent poles where they'd make movie after movie after movie and, and everyone would be happy. But instead... They uh, 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 screwed the pooch, as they say. It's <laughs> a good saying. Good saying. And um, this week, we're doing Jack the Giant Slayer 2013. Um, Brian Singer, director. Brian Singer, the guy that directed all the X-Men movies and is sort of in charge of the whole X-Men franchise, which uh, is a clue because they uh, X-Men 1 was pretty good. X-Men 2 was great. And then they just... And, and then they made X-Men 3 and they were like, well, I guess it can't get any worse than this movie. Let's keep going. <laughs> Couldn't they get worse than X-Men 3? It they turns out worse. they could. <laughs> I don't think I've seen Dark Phoenix. I, I'm not even sure if I've seen Dark Phoenix yet. I for sure haven't. 100%. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Superhero month may come my way just... at some point. Sansa Stark as Jean Grey just bummed me out right away. And I was like, I can't, I just can't follow this anymore. Well, it's funny because in those initial movies, they made like a very direct difference between adults and kids. And it's like Wolverine was an adult. Jean Grey was an adult. Cyclops was mostly an adult. Um, and then Don't knock James Marsden. Oh, he's, he's terrible as Cyclops. He's like... <laughs> emo cyclops <laughs> yeah it's like put glasses on him so he really doesn't emote anything <laughs> i'm acting her i don't emote normally but i'm acting even less he's like oh my god but so, then you saw him in sonic the hedgehog and you were like oh this guy's the greatest actor of all time it's okay i haven't seen sonic yet <gasps> dan i love that why would i have seen is it like is it free somewhere for me to see no then I don't it's know. I probably bought it. Unlikely. I, I, I bought, bought it in four K UHD, uh, baby. I paid two hundred dollars to get it one minute before everybody else. Great, good job. Yeah, I would have. How about that? I know you would have. <laughs> I'll pay whatever it takes to have it first. I saw that shit in the theaters, man. It's great. Anyhow, back to that this was movie. pre pre COVID though, right? Or did you see it? It in was. Co- yeah. It was. It was no, pre-COVID. no, it was pre COVID. Yep. And you dream about them like going back to like, do you, do you want the, the director's cut, you know, where he has like the little weird mouth and the strange eyes? <laughs> no, no, that's the that's the only instance where fan reaction fixed a movie. And I think it's wonderful. I just hope that they don't set a precedent <laughs> where they allow fans to dictate things in the future. Well, the fans should have dictated a lot about Jack the Giant Slayer. <laughs> Are there fans? <laughs> that's the problem. Who wanted this movie? So I went and I was like, OK, I'm going to try and find Brian. Brian Singer talking about what the hell was going on here. Oh, that's and great. So I watch one and like the, you know, it was like a little five minutes of him talking about it. And it's him talking all about the mocap and how they mocap the actors. And then they held the tennis balls up and then he could watch it on the screen and see the acting as the giants. You're just like, sure. Less t- spend less time on that. Cause... Right, like he so so basically, Brian Singer is enthralled with his own technical uh, prowess here, and he forgot to direct a movie. Well, and that's kind of the case, you know. It's sort of the James Cameron thing. James Cameron directed some of the greatest movies of all time, and now he's he's buried in in mocap land. And sure, but what? Eh, eh, eh is right. So, um, yes, we're not going to talk all about Brian Singer's uh, legal troubles. (laughs) (laughs) 
Not on this show. He's been fairly canceled at this point. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess let's let's start digging into this. We start with some voiceover, excellent, and excellent. The- what? <laughs> excellent i loved it it was wonderful i was trying to write something and i was like oh i'll start with voiceover and then i was like realized whenever you start with voiceover you're an asshole yeah yeah yeah. no it's i every time it starts like that i'm like oh here we go come on and so it's a dad telling his son a story son a story sort of cut in with the girl with her dad telling her a story so we we have these sort of her mom we have these two sort of parallel stories and yep. this is one of my most contentious points of the entire movie. Um, wh- oh boy! Why you would do this? And, okay. Okay. So basically, we're 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 laid out everything. The giants live in John time up in the sky. Uh, at some point, these monks planted a bean. It went up there. They were trying to find God. They got up there. They met the giants. The giants liked eating human beings. The giants came down. And there was a big war, and then the one king made a helmet which controlled the giants. I which, which, still to this day do not understand the fucking crown. <laughs> which seems like a great magic item. You know, like after I made the, the, the one that controls giants, I'd make one that controls humans, then I make one that controls cats. So you could like yes, make I, the cats do whatever damn, you want. That's but, the moral of this movie is if something doesn't agree with you, just control it. Just put strict measures on it and control it because you don't want that in your life. It's it's terrible. So stupid. And it's done in this kind of weird animated thing. And it's like, I thought back like the Hellboy movie had some really interesting animated things. The Harry Potter one, that animated thing they had in the Harry Potter where they explain the Horcruxes. Really interesting. Like some weird puppets. You know, they, they hired out some designer. No, these things just look like weird sort of comic booky illustrations Every, sort of come to life. And I don't want to knock on people too much, obviously, but all of the art direction in this movie is garbage. Like every single aspect of it looks like people either didn't try or they like didn't care because it's not good. None of it's good. Of the few good points in this movie, I'm going to I think there's two or three things that I'm going to single out. We'll single them out when I get to them. They are okay. art direction things. Wow, okay. But that's because Pro- Prove me wrong, Dan. There's so little in everything else, <laughs> character, yeah. story, acting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that well, those are the hold few on. things I mean other than you and McGregor acting Ewan his fine. ass off. You like, <laughs> I will not be part of what's going on right. here. Damn it. That's kind of what I got. He He's acting well in defiance of his own movie because he's like, fuck you guys. I'm doing this thing. Yes. I so we, we we set up everything. And then we also set up that the crown is then crown and the magic beans are then buried with the king. Supposedly. Supposed, yeah. Supposedly. Also, this setup takes... I don't know, seven minutes, maybe? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's your first it act. It takes forever. It's we're it's like we're reading a real chapter book, and I'm so bored already. I'm just like, just get to the action. I don't need all this setup. Yeah, but you see, this is in lieu of a, a first act, right? Yes, yes, you're right so about you, that. You do all this in, in, in lieu of a first act so that you don't have to do, cause, and that's what this movie really suffers from, is you don't have a first act, so your main characters have no character. There's like, they're like ghosts. There's nothing there. And then luckily we get at minimum two or three third acts. So they they make up for it later. Don't worry. It's going to keep on another third act, another third act, another third act. So then, you know, boom, uh, another sloppy thing. Ten years later. So we're going to jump yeah. ten years later and then we're going to live in this world for about 96 hours at the most i mean (laughs) was it even 96 hours was it three three days i had my question is how long it takes to climb up the beanstalk one day because is it one day that feels like a lot to do in one day well i mean it has to be one day because they didn't spend more than one day i mean i guess i understand what you're saying is that like in this movie it has to be one day but i'm just thinking (laughs) it feels really hot like it's higher than Everest, right? I don't know. <laughs> well, the, the the issue with Everest is you can't just climb up it. You know? I mean, that's... I, the, I mean, I guess that's true. 
but we're we're to a point that at any point on Earth, you can't technically see this floating island, right? Uh, we're we're not going to even go into it. We're not going to. We're not going to go into the science of their world. <laughs> no. Well, okay. that takes away a lot of what I have to talk about. Dan. I I assume there's like cloud cover on the bottom, so there's going to always be this one giant stationary cloud. Which if you live under it, you're kind of effed. You don't cause, know. Because depending on the size of this thing, you're not going to get a lot of direct sunlight. So you kind of have this weird dead zone, I would think. You 100% right? unless it's moving, in which case the beanstalk doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, not that it makes any sense to begin with. I I don't know. None of it makes any sense to me. You mean like. Unless it's a flat earth. That's Is still this flat earth any, science? That still doesn't make any sense. <laughs> flat earth, flat earth science. There's, there's an oxymoron. <sighs> Yeah, and of course, you know, any beanstalk that happens goes right up to the edge. Yes, like perfectly. And he, mm, 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 mm. so my question is, does it, does it bend and move to connect? What, like, that's its job is to connect to the land no matter where you are. Or maybe the island moves, like, to connect. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It was just under a house, and it just happened to go right up directly to the side. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's called magic. It's called laziness. Of course. (laughs) And that's, that's, this movie is uh, replete with laziness. Ooh, replete. That's a good word, Dan. So Jack has to go into town to sell the horse and the cart to get money for something i don't know rent <laughs> tithe so then we have um so are we, goes, hold on are we yeah. told that his father's dead at some point yeah but are we told or because we just wake up and all of a sudden he's living with his uncle and he's like i've been taking care of you for years why i mean why that's is this the, in here that's like the one thing where there is a little bit of not subtext but you know where we didn't just spell it out we didn't just say too bad your father died six years right. ago. You know, I mean, he's <laughs> but like, that's what I was expecting because I just got an eighteen-minute story, and then the one thing that matters, I was like, why isn't it just the uncle raising him as a kid then? Why, like, because the, uncle, the cause dad the, being dead doesn't come to the story at all. Because the uncle's a dick, and he doesn't want to read him a story. He has to be a dick, <laughs> right? Does he have to be a dick okay. so that he goes out in the storm to do something? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. He could just be desperate for money. So he goes to the town, which is more like the castle, which is more like, it's like for some sure Lord the of the Rings place. You know, yeah. it's like this weird thing that d- never existed anywhere and is dumb. So he 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 just like, you know, it's like you, you go there and you just leave your stuff laying around. Like he's never understands that the city's dangerous. He's like he dumb. He he dumb kid. <laughs> he dumb. He dumb. Jack a dumb dumb. So he Have walks. Have you seen in. my cart? Has anyone seen my cart? No, idiot. No one's gonna tell you where your cart is. It's gone. You got hijacked. <laughs> like why did they just steal the horse too? Why did they just like <laughs> they like, they took the time to disconnect it from the horse? Like he he probably loves the horse, but this cart. This is an A plus wooden cart. <laughs> And and yes, a horse, a, a good horse, is actually incredibly valuable. Cart's probably it's fairly be valuable, worth way but a, more. Yeah. Oh yeah, way more. Any living creature is worth way more. Uh, but no, he just. He, and the other thing is, you go in the past. What you do is you drop that off at a livery stable, right? You know what a livery stable is? I sure don't, Dan. I'm not three hundred years old. That's what someone never played D and D. The livery stable is the place where you go <laughs> and you drop off your horse and you say, okay. "Could you feed and water the horse while I go about town trying to find a thing to buy it?" Why? Why go great. S- screwing around? Because and then he watches it and then you come back there and if it's stolen, you beat the shit out of him <laughs> because you're tough like Jack, fucking asshole. Yeah, um, Jack. So instead of doing what he's supposed to do, he wants to watch a play with with none other than Warwick Davis doing great. Uh, what did they do? The Jack and the Beanstalk story again. Yeah, which we just heard minutes ago. Just and, do that one. That one's way more entertaining than the one that you gave me at the beginning of the movie. And and we will have endless amounts of people pulling out the book, referencing oh, a book. You know, let's, let's look at this book again. It's the legend, <laughs> the text. Like, there's nothing else that goes on in this stupid place. 
Um, so he's th- there's these like three ruffians, and they start like picking on the the mildly attractive girl. Oh, really? Oh, do you think she's? Ooh. Oh, what do you think she's? I think you're like I, I wouldn't touch her with, with your dick. What do you? What is, I wouldn't touch you with a thirty six and a half foot pole. You know, um, I just feel like we have two very unattractive leads, and then in like the third lead, we have you and McGregor, who's <laughs> more attractive than both of them put together. He's, I mean, he's built by God. If I was signing on to a movie and they were like, okay, your co-star is going to be you and McGregor. I'd be like, no, pass. Get somebody <laughs> uglier than me. I don't want to be showed up every time he's on screen, which is what happens. That's he's what, a beautiful man. That's the one thing Brian Singer said. He said to you and play him like he's Errol Flynn. And it's like, yep, he yeah. has, he has he that energy. It. You watch an Errol Flynn movie and you're like, yeah, no. No, no girl will look at me. He's in the room. No girl will. They, you know, they'll just all be around him and you'll just be standing there and be like, oh, I suck. Yeah, which is like every high school party I ever went to, which is fine. I get it. But I don't want that in my movie. <laughs> um, you know, the kid, this Nicholas Huat, he played Knox in uh, Mad Max Fury Road. He played the bald guy, the second. Well, movie. he also plays Beast in x-men which is a great use because he's covered in blue fur for like two-thirds of the movie um i remember when they first introduced him as beast in whatever the first one i hated yeah. him i continue to hate yeah. him it's he for is sure. literally the most he's a tall weird thin guy playing a guy who's supposed to be built like a house well he's like a he's like a, a gra- like a worker he's like a field like a worker guy he should be like he should look like he worked more than one day in his entire life. No, this in this kid, movie, this kid never did any. This kid sat around his shit, reading books and doing nothing, Play, playing playing D anD D, like me. So, <laughs> like me. So they're kind of picking on the girl, and he sort of intervenes. I think he gets punched in the face because he doesn't he really does. have any skills. He got hit in the face and he had a good line here. He was like, oh, I thought I thought you were too drunk to do that, which is like funny because he wouldn't have intervened if he thought they were sober because he knows he can get his ass kicked. It was it was clever. And then, you know, and then we didn't have another clever line for about two hours. <laughs> then Ewan McGregor shows up and the ruffians, all, everybody bows down and he says, oh, I got there's somebody behind me. And then he stands there and doesn't <laughs> bow instantly. No, I know. It's like he's never seen royalty before. <laughs> I think, like, oh, why is everybody down on their knees? <laughs> and that, the whole thing about it is if you're going to set this in, you know, a sort of medieval England where you have a king who is, you know, just like there's God and then there's king, you know, it's it's not it's not a joke around. thing. I think later on when he deals with the king, he doesn't automatically genuflect himself. Yes, Dan. And I wrote that note at at the end. I like the. Well, maybe not the end. I thought it was I think it was when I thought it was an end and then it wasn't an end because there was a whole nother battle coming. But he's the king is like, oh, Jack, take good care of her. And instead of like saying anything, he just goes. Nods his head and then rides off. I was like, fuck you. That is your king. You say, yes, my lord. Yes, king. Say something, you disrespectful shit bird. And that's the whole thing is. If you're going to I mean, that's the fun of these locations is yes. respect. And you need mm-hmm. to show that this kid is garbage, essentially, because he is garbage. A peasant is garbage. The king and these people could do whatever they want with him. He is nothing. And and the king, you know, at the end, of course, he gets the girl. He just like goes, I guess so. You know, he, he gets he, the girl and he gets a crown. That is not how royalty works, Dan. You can't, you can't just working. find a crown and become a prince. I'm sorry. So, Ugh. so you and McGregor's the the guard guy, and he's he's kind of laissez faire about this kid bowing down. Everyone's sort of laissez faire, whatever. Um, so he finally bows down, whatever, and then he goes outside, and his card is gone. Drinking. Water. I mean. You can, I was leaving you some <laughs> you space mean, you should, to say something, Tony. You got to hydrate. I just, I just don't understand why he didn't get the crap beat out of him in this scene twice. Because 
He should, Ewan McGregor should have had his knights beat the crap out of the kid. And then he should have gone home and been like, hey, uncle, I lost one of the two things you wanted me to sell. And then he gets the shit kicked out of him again because he is the worst kid in the world. He should be in the mud, bleeding, learning his lesson. <laughs> he, should, he should be bloodied the whole damn movie. He's like, I'm going to go off the stage. They're like, we can't understand you through your bloody lips. It's, I'm it's all swollen. I don't know. So then we meet San Lee Tucci as the bad guy. And then he has like this really, this really weird character. That's like his sidekick who has like feathers on his shoulders. Who's like really weird. And, and in a different movie also. One, oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> he's, Cause he's all like this. Is this guy? And it's like, he, nobody, <laughs> you're, you're not even remotely close to what this movie feels like. Get out. So we find out that this monk has gone in there and stolen the beans, but he's not stolen the crown, even though the crown has fallen on the ground in a broken pot and can be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, monks are stupid. It's one of those, it's one of those things you don't really talk about. So the monk goes downstairs and then, or down, you know, goes to try to escape. And then they've cut off the escape. So he like gives the beads to Jack and says, take these to the the, the monk place, uh, monastery, and they'll give you some, some money. And I'm going to, now I'm yeah. just going to take your horse and try to escape. And Jack believes that he'll get the money for the beads, right? Because again, he's a dumb kid. He's now, a dumb, but, dumb guy. But hold on a second. He believes the guy and he makes no, he doesn't try to go to the monastery. Wouldn't you immediately go to the monastery and try and get the cash? Do they have a well, line in there? He why brings he it up. Yeah, they have a line. He says it to the uncle. He's like, well, I'll just go to the monastery and get the money. He's like, you believed him? Well, he's a monk is, is basically how I remember that conversation but, going. Okay, and then they moved okay, on. Okay. Your, 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 your evil uncle sends you to the store to get him cigarettes, Tony. You know, he's on a bender. Okay. He needs cigarettes. Okay. You're, you're fifth not, grade. You're nine, fifth grade. Yeah, I remember. You go there and you get scammed out of the five dollars, and the guy gives you like a bag of cocaine. And they say, mm -hmm. they says to you, take this coat. You know, you can get money for this cocaine if you take it to the drug dealer's house. Are you going to go home to your, well, probably if it wasn't cocaine, you probably would go to your. You're crazy. I'm crazy. Yeah, like it, that that's cocaine. an upgrade, Dan. <laughs> I'd be <laughs> like, upgrade. I didn't get you cigarettes, but guess what? You can be okay. high for days. <laughs> he gives you a he gives you a hubcap. Would you take your that hubcap back to your your uncle, or would you take the hubcap to the the scrap metal place and try and get some money to take back to your uncle? I mean, you're doing that because you're ashamed of what just happened. And you're like, I can't go back with just this tiny bag of beans like an idiot. Now, when the monk said the thing about the bag and these were holy relics, did you get the feeling that the monks were evil? I honestly still don't know the answer to no, that. No, but I, I, I just want because I was like, oh, my God, there's going to be this interesting subplot where these monks, oh, yeah. there's this sort of secondary monk thing where the monks are trying to do a thing and the monks are evil and you know they're gonna there's gonna be all these sort of twisted things about control of these beans and but there nothing. wasn't there's just like yeah no i 100 percent thought that that was gonna happen they they sort of implied that the monk sort of said it yeah. it's sort of a conspiracy. Well, why else way. do the monks want it so bad the only reason you can think of is to go up there and be with the giants or to go to heaven maybe they'd go they'd start the beanstalk like six feet over and so it would go so to it heaven. Misses the edge and keeps going. They've plotted a chart of where the edge of the island is over the years. They've used all the beans to touch the edges. So now we have a whole stupid thing where we have Jack and the princess getting lectured about responsibility, and the beans get thrown, you know, get knocked away. Well, one bean gets knocked away, and then some are put mm. in the thing. It's very vague. Yeah, who knows? Yes. As so, long as one of them falls through the floorboards, that's yes. all you need to know. So the so so our big character arc is to take responsibility. Is that our character arc? I mean, that's something that they pitch and then don't pay off. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> so so uh, they're torturing the monk. Uh, Stanley Tucci's torturing the monk. Who cares? The princess, in an act of 
wanting to find adventure just gets on a horse and rides away. And then it starts. I mean, to she's rain. basically Princess Jasmine, right? She just continually runs no, out no, to no, the no. to the people. <laughs> no, Princess Jasmine's like has some skills and is active. This oh, this woman sure. is garbage. For, I agree one hundred percent. I just meant in the fact that like it seems like all princesses, all they want to do is not be a princess. Sure. In these movies, heaven forbid. What a what a. It sounds nightmare. terrible. <laughs> <sighs> so she rides off into the rain. And she ends up at his house and they sort of, I don't know, there's sort of manufactured moment ish stuff where she like talks yeah. about wanting to Yeah, I mean, they recognize stuff. each other. So oh, like, yeah, I guess that's something. Sort of saved her. Oh yeah, she's like, I'm shrouded and you cannot tell I'm a girl. And it's like, yeah. you know, put on a fake mustache, do something with your voice. <laughs> no, no. That would be great. But there is an incredibly cute cat. Yeah, you noticed that too, huh? And I don't think we ever dealt with the house being destroyed and what happens to the cat, do we? I mean, it's dead. It's for (laughs) sure dead. If they don't show it running away from the wreckage, it's dead. And why would you do that? Why would you have an incredibly cute cat and then basically kill it? Like, what another dick move, Brian Singer, amongst (laughs) your many dick moves. Guy's got a lot of problems. You know, (laughs) what are you going to do? So... Boom, lo and behold, here comes the beanstalk. Yeah. And what does what does the princess do? What does she do? Does she just Her... do they, I feel like they both just look at it. No, well, when it starts growing and she gets trapped oh. in the house, what does she do? I don't know. She whines like a bitch. Hurry, oh, okay. Jack. <laughs> please get me out. Help me, help me. I want to have adventure, but help me, help me. I cannot do for myself. Now, okay, yeah. would, wouldn't this be a movie if they actually made the princess a character? Uh, no, that's not a blockbuster, yes. Dan. Okay, blockbuster. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. She's she has to be garbage. Yes. Have you not learned anything from this show? Look at Pluto Nash. All right. The female characters are not allowed to be capable or interesting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Help, give me, oh my God, talk about, inc- oh, Love Guru. I've got the list right here, so I'm, oh, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for all of you, I don't know if I'll use that as the clip or not, but Dan printed out a <laughs> list of all of our movies just to see if this was indeed the worst movie we've ever done. And it's it's right up there. I mean, It's you know, definitely what, close. What's her name in Fred Claus? You know, like, what, what is <laughs> happening? And, but at least she, and this is, you know, objectification to the max, but at least she's smoking hot in that movie. <laughs> it's funny because I look back, you know, it's funny because I'm I'm arguing for giving the women um, like real roles. And then I look back and I'm like, some of the only thing about these terrible movies is the women are incredibly attractive. And at least you have that to look forward to. And how, how shitty is like, that's, that's not good. And that's, that's a terrible Hollywood thing because if they made her a real character, then you'd be you'd be you'd give little girls an engagement or women or anybody like me. You know, it's like Sarah Connor, greatest character ever in that oh, first great. Terminator movie. You were just like, I'm in love. She's the greatest. She's the action hero we all need. It's it's a very easy blueprint to not yeah. make your women garbage. And, you know, and that's what you see on the list is again and again and again and again, they make these women useless and not have personalities and not have arcs. Yeah. And the characters disappear and you don't care. I mean, we care a little bit, but not for the right reasons. We care that (laughs) we care what we care about right now is that they were that way in the first place. So it's it's gone up there. Jax wakes up. There's Ewan McGregor. Everybody showed up and we're like, oh, the princess is up the beanstalk. Let's go. And they let Jack go with them. Yeah. So I, I guess go. I'm a little confused because everyone seems rather chill about a giant beanstalk that just went to the clouds, yeah. much like a children's fable that they've heard all their lives. Nobody is, no one is the least bit surprised. They're just like, oh, yeah, okay, sure. well, yeah. I guess we got to go get her. What? What? 
you guys, this is a giant <laughs> beanstalk that grew overnight. It was <laughs> instantaneous. Yeah. Nobody okay. cares. Yeah. I hate these uh, people. Okay. Uh, they deserve to die. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going to say. So there they go. Um, they just start climbing up. <laughs> they just yeah start climbing up. And then at a certain point, um, Roderick kills some guys. Uh, oh right, Stanley cuts, Tucci. Could be, and it's kind of like, why did he even kill them? Yeah, no, I have no idea. I mean, I guess he's just whittling the troops down. You know, he's like less competition up top, so he just cuts that line. Is like, oh, the vine broke. That did no, it didn't. And so Liar. they they get to the top, and they're you know she's not in the house, and it's the morning. Yeah, so they were just. It took them one day, one night to get up, and then of course, Ewan McGregor's like, oh, we're low on rations, as as if these you know in medieval times everybody ate you know three squares every day three like, <laughs> yeah three meals a day baby come on i'm, I'm dying you know it's like we are we are worthless white people that demand snacks every two hours <laughs> whatever um th- these should be people that are very used to going hungry so yeah, for sure so Stanley Tucci's character knows that Jack has how does he know Jack has the beans the rest of the beans he just infers I guess, it. I guess he, yeah, I think he just assumes because it grew out of his house. You know? Yeah, so he infers it and then shakes him down. He gets all the beans, but Jack really smartly sneaks one out and hides it in his, his little locket, which. Which I assume will not come back to play later. Cause... Really? <laughs> that's not, that's not going to be the one magical thing that's going to save the day? No, definitely not. That, that would be too too easy to call in the beginning you know you don't want to foreshadow too hard and then back down at the bottom they find the the three dead guys and they you know treat it like a crime scene oh cut rope oh, something's crime scene <laughs> something's afoot uh lots of yelling and bad feeling i don't know what that meant so they decide to split up yeah, as you do in in all great movies, you don't stick together in a group. Like if you if you look at all the like, Fellowship of the Ring, right? They're better when they once they break up. That's when the stuff really happens. I mean, when they Frodo did break up. They did break and up, Tubby they? go to the mountain Fro- by themselves. I can't Frodo remember. and who? Tubby. 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 Yeah. Tubby? <laughs> the character Tubby. We got Bilbo. Tubbo, could be, I don't. Could it be Samwise Gamgee? Yeah, yeah, that guy. No. Anyhow, Tubby. when they br- sure when they break up, thing, that's we'll when they get stuffed up. Calling him Tubby, the guy from Stranger Things. I think he'll be fine. <laughs> I love how we think of him as the guy from Stranger Things. Chris, <laughs> Chris, somebody. He's like had a million roles, done a million things, and now we. Oh yeah, he's he's the guy that died. No, nope, you're the guy from Stranger, Stranger things. things. That's it. <laughs> That's all you are to me. That's what I more. thought. That's what I instantly thought. <laughs> so then we have we get our first giant. We we see the sheep, and there's a trap. They get caught in the trap. They cut themselves out of the trap. I like the one, the other dude, the secondary dude. Um, not that he's going to live very long. I've I saw him. In, I've seen him in other things, and I like him. Okay. Um, I don't even. I don't even know if I remember who he is. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I recognize him from something. I looked it up and then I immediately forgot what it is I recognized him from. Sure. Like but hey, British good for him. Actor. He's a real British actor. Um, okay. So it's a giant trap. The trap The trap was set for these cute little sheep. Sheep are very cute. Um, weren't they cute? They're I, cute. I mean, they were sheep. sheep are, <laughs> they're cute little you like sheep? Species. They're cute. Oh my sheep. gosh. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, these cute little sheep are going to get eaten. So yeah. Jack hides underwater. Ewan hides behind a rock. The other dude hides behind the tree. The giant comes over, sees the thing has been cut, smells because they have big smell machines. And then he finds the guy and then he like literally like, <laughs> like eats him, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pops, like, pops, 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 pops. Yeah, popsicles, corn, corn dogs. 
that I think corn dog is probably better. Yeah, I would. I would love to see him like popsicle and maybe pop the head <laughs> off, just suck out all the juice. That's a different movie altogether. Oh, and he and he knocks out Ewan and takes Ewan, right? Yeah, he takes Ewan. Does he, does he take yeah, him? Yeah, he takes oh, him. Oh, yeah, because then we get to pigs in a blanket, which is <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> and you're kind of like, um, Tony, let's do, we're going to do a Tony thing. Tony, you walk into yeah. a room. There, yeah. are two, okay. there are two Snickers bars on the table. <laughs> okay. Do you eat one Snickers bar and then take one to your king? Take one back to me, your king? Your king? No, I don't. Dan, I tell you that I walked into the room. I didn't find anything. <laughs> I've eaten both Snickers, but also you'll see that the rest of the room has been overturned because I'm looking for any more Snickers that might have fallen through the cracks. <laughs> no Snickers for you, sir. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so, funny. so <laughs> Roderick, like, Kills the other dude he's with, whatever. As yeah, as you would as the bad guy, I guess. And then lo and behold, right after he kills him, they turn around and there's a giant standing there. Yeah. This giant has like creepy, creepy, creep, creep, creep. creep. They're very <laughs> sneaky when they want to be. The so just in general through this movie, the anatomy of the giants changes, but also makes Does no it? sense. What do you mean? I we'll talk about it in the final battle, but okay. it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay. Um, okay. So, oh, I think the giant eats. Oh, he eats his little weird buddy. So he's his little buddy's yeah. down. So once again, this is you, you've made this odious character the buddy. What is that buddy there in a real movie? What is that buddy there for? Uh, well, I was hoping he was there for comedic relief. If yes, I'm being honest, but. Yeah. What's supposed to happen? He's supposed to be there. So at a certain point, someone gets to take vengeance on him because you can't do it on the big baddie. The big baddie's got to last to the end. But this guy has to be punished or killed or tortured or shown what's what. By the way, Stanley Tucci also doesn't last till the end of the movie. (laughs) Yeah, no, because well, there's he lasts to the the first end of the movie, and then the the second end of the movie, he's not there for. Because there's no villain in this movie, really. <laughs> Correct. They've Correct. chosen not to have a villain. This is a it's... not only that, but I am on the giant's side a little bit. Oh, yeah. Just for the record, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we We're have dicks. essentially enslaved them with mind control and shunned them to this floating island that I don't think is all that big. I don't think this island is. It's definitely not as big as the Earth because I see edges. And they're way bigger than us. How many giants are up there, first of all? Is there a lot of room? I don't know. I'm very curious about this. And do they reproduce, Dan, or are they immortal? Because at the end, we go back and we see the island is still there. Great. But are the giants there? I didn't see any female giants when we were there. They showed us no female giants, which is I'm a little confused. so weird. Like, <laughs> if you're going to show us 40 or 50 male giants, show us two or three lady giants. Right? I mean... For- you would have to think that even though they're female giants and females are worthless in this universe, they would still be able to kill humans because they're giants. So they can still do something. And, you know, know. The, the whole idea that the giants don't just make a piece of rope and just climb down. For real. There are so many ways that they could just take over the earth. I mean, they're like, they make iron. They can do everything up there. And I mean... You know, and a kind of idea of them being like immortal, being like titans, being like their breeding rates are very slow. You know, there's a bunch of things you can say if you were really interested in building a universe. And that's one of my whole other points about not. about like something like Game of Thrones is you have these primary characters, these Jon Snows and whatnot. But then you have all these secondary characters that you actually empathize with and, and feel like mm-hmm. they're you. And in this movie, those those people just got eaten. They all just, they, you know, <laughs> hop, hop, they're gone. Gone, 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 well, gone. Well, I'm dead. So, uh, oh, so he pulls out the crown and he takes charge of all the giants. Wow. Didn't, didn't see that coming. <laughs> you didn't? Dan, you got to get better at watching movies. <laughs> So, is it, so can we yeah. just put this to bed right now? Uh-oh, no. Is it full mind control 
or is it like mind suggestion? Because they're not walking around like zombies. So it's not like he's controlling them, but he can kind of direct them. So it's like subliminal messaging from the crown. Is well, what I mean, do you really want to get into it? Because it's really terrible because the end of the movie, whatever suppositions you want to make about the crown, they're all gone because all the giants just bow down without a word being spoken yep. at all. Because it certainly seems and he's like... not wearing the crown yeah, when they is. bow down. Yeah, no, 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 he's still he's holding it out like this oh, and man. they bow down and then he puts it on. But Tucci had to put it on and then it went magic. It did like a shimmery thing. I'm just saying, no, keep I it know. keep it the same, guys. Continuity, you dicks. You know, these mind controls are very, you know, when you cast mind control in uh, in magic, you take control. Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know. It's, 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 it's a garbage plot device is what it is. It's a garbage yes, it plot is. device because you know what this movie would have been? It would be a thousand times better if there was a total of one giant. Oh, yeah, for sure. If there was one giant, this would have been a movie, but it wasn't. A but movie. then there's not a sequel, Dan. I mean, this is we're creating well, you, the, the first in a series of great, great films. Then you have his brother. That's that's part two is his brother. Oh, I see. OK. Okay, so the giant. Okay, so Jack finds the castle. The giants have the girl. He can smell that she's the Eric the Great's ancestor. And then we have the yeah. talk, talk about the two headed giant and how he's smart. And then he's got this malformed, uh, as someone on on the internet called it, retarded second head. I read some reviews, and the one guy was like, the only thing I liked about it was the one giant had oh, a God. retarded head, and then I'm always doing the retarded head voice to my my girlfriend, and it drives her crazy. Oh, my God. So if you're triggered by that kind of talk, I did not say this. Someone else said this, and I'm just I mean, first of all, that guy, whoever wrote that, is a garbage <laughs> human being. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. I mean... What? Why? Why? None of the other giants seem to have deformities like that. The one guy had really, you know weird what I mean, red hair. <laughs> so being, being a redhead also a deformity. But other than that, in this world, and his hair looked like it was made out of sticks. Stick hair. Yeah. Stick hair. Yeah. Stick hair. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I just don't. I don't. I don't get it. I don't know why. I guess was that also supposed to be comedic relief? Because yes, nothing that the giants funny. do were funny to me. They fart. I mean, they they fart, and one guy eats his boogers, and I was just oh, like, he ate "This, his boogers. Isn't, this he ate isn't his boogers. funny to me." He ate his boogers. Why are these? <laughs> did it, he did it. He really did it. He go, did it. Nom 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 nom. This is delicious. I is that funny still? I I don't. Maybe for kids. Is this a kids movie? Nobody. Well, because people one thing, are getting eaten. I don't know. I read somewhere somebody took their nieces to it, and the nieces did not deal well with the giants, like literally eating human beings. Yeah, because it's pretty messed up. So I don't understand who this movie is for. Because we do those stupid childish <laughs> bits, which is pretty much the only comedic relief you have in the movie. People aren't saying witty, funny dialogue. It's just these stupid base jokes that don't really fit in the movie, which I assume are for children. But children can't watch this movie because these giants are killing people and are relatively scary for a kid's movie. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. So uh, Roderick's brought in there. He's in charge. Jack is in. Jack goes to the gold, the, the place where all the gold is, sees the golden harp, which, of course, like those are all the kind of classic things is the duck the laid the golden eggs and the magic harp but no nope, right no, no that's not gonna you know we've already got our magic items in play so we're not gonna mess with more yeah, magic items I, we made up our own the magic crown <laughs> don't worry about it so roderick's like your guys are gonna attack get ready to attack in the morning and then we get to the um they're baking uh you and into a little pie along with these other these two poor little pigs the pigs are kind of cute too CGI. Yeah, pigs CGI. in a blanket. It's a it's a good bit. It's a visual gag that I enjoyed. CGI pigs in a blanket. Yep. But that was about it. Oh, I mean, and I enjoyed like it this big, in weird... a dark way. 
because they are going to kill those pigs just full on. They're going to eat the bones. It's pretty dark. And then Ewan makes a little joke about how he's he has it, how he's in control, even though he's wrapped up yeah. about to get cooked. That's Which cute. I kind of want more of that stuff. Could everything, not everything, but he's got my favorite moments in the movie. Why isn't this movie about him? I mean, come on, let's just be real, guys. Let's just give him the lead of this movie and let him run the franchise. Please. Because he's a guy that can actually lead a franchise as opposed to Mr. Meeks. <laughs> so we don't want to so, do that. So Jack climbs up there, picks up a knife, jumps down there, kills the giant. Bing, bang, boom, done. So I'm going to be honest. I'm confused. How did he kill the giant? I think I missed it. He he. There's a knife hanging over the giant. He picks up the knife and then he jumps in with his weight. So it's like if you kept knives above you and then your cat grabbed one of those knives and then used its weight and plunged it into your shoulder and that would kill you. But only if my cat is actually the size of like maybe a mouse at best, right? Because he's not let's, the let's, size of a let cat. Let me rephrase that. If you had a hamster and the hamster got yeah. out and he grabbed a little knife and he's like, Tony dies tonight. Now, and he is that going to kill me? I don't think that's going to kill me, Dan. I don't. I think it's going to, I'm going to go, ow, what happened? What are you doing, you crazy well, little bird? You know, since this is a Brian Singer movie, that could be an adamantium knife. Okay. <laughs> All right. Got it. Got it. Pierces it anything. Adamantium. It's because because oh. they don't have normal rocks up there. It's all meteors that hit, and that's up all their. It's all meteor metal. Yeah, because <laughs> that's where you, that's uh, where you that, get adamantium. Is that a thing, meteor metal? Because you should trademark that. I like the alliteration. I think it sounds good. I mean, that's where adamantium comes from, right? It's like this. One but they don't call it meteor. meteor metal. I'm saying the name meteor well, metal is quite catchy. That's the whole thing is most meteors that crash in here, they're either rock or they're metal. Most of them are iron. Hmm. And, you know, yes, you you uh, through the years, people have taken metal from meteors and made it into swords. The Japanese have done that. It's very, very typical. That sounds cool. Good for them. So down below, we're having a whole fancy fair at the site of the Beanstalk. We've set up carnival games. Yeah, it's a renaissance fair. It's like, I mean, that's what they're doing. There's a bunch of cosplayers at a Renaissance fair. In a movie packed with stuff that I hated, that was one of the things I thought was the dumbest. <laughs> I get it. Get it. Because, like, you know, people are in jeopardy. We're on a rescue mission, and we're just down here goofing off. Okay, we got to pick up the pace. Three more pages of this shit. Okay, well, hold um, on. Before we move on, can we take a second and talk about the costumes? <laughs> Or do you want to wait for that? No, we wait. I'll tell you when we're talk okay. talking about the costumes. Right. I have a point at which I want to talk about the costumes. All right. Um, so they're having family fair. Then they start talking about cutting it down. Um, let's see. So they're, Terrible they're getting, plan, by the way. Yeah, they did not plan that, that well. So they have time to do a funeral for the... Uh, Ewan's buddy that died, which is like insane. Yep. And and we we get to Jack's first skill of the movie. He like gets magic plants to bandage up the princess. So he's a healer. Oh, Dan, here's what here's what I thought was happening. I thought he just literally picked grass and then was just going to like wrap it around her arm so the grass holds the blood in. I thought it was like a makeshift band-aid. I didn't realize he was. <laughs> I was just like, she could have done this herself, bro. Why? What is? Why is this a big deal? Just no. put something over the blood, you idiot. So he's healing her. Okay, he's healing her. Yes, uh, princess. Got I wrote it. right here. Princess dash. I'm useless. They're going for the edge. <laughs> so they get to the point, and somehow Roderick has known that they're going to try to escape. So he's put a guard there. And so Jack has his has an idea because he's idea boy now, and he goes and yeah. finds a big thing of bees, and then they're able to sneak over to the giant. They're able to open his helmet. They're able to dump the bees in there. They're able to close the helmet, and then the giant's like, ah, bees, ah, bees, and he goes right to the edge, and then one more bee comes, and then he farts, and then he falls backwards because he's an idiot. I hated 
everything, even when you just said it in a concise manner, I still hated it. I hated everything that happened. And I'm also confused. We do. Do we see other wildlife up top? I mean, we see the um, pigs. So obviously they have like farm animals. Pigs sheep. Um, this is what Brian Singer said on one of the things. Oh, God. If, <laughs> you got to be sitting down for this one. I, I was if I, I just rented it and then I watched that today and then my rental's already over so I couldn't go back and watch it. Tony, you probably bought it oh, so you no. can go back and watch it. I okay. spent $19.99 buying this movie because you're insane. Um, you better believe he's it. like the throne room's got to be really big and then there's tables with all sorts of food laid out because they need a lot of room to eat and there'll be like elephants on the tables how, how do you where are the elephant you have elephants up there <laughs> i don't understand they've got a whole breeding so basically pop, what you're saying breeding population of elephants up there so he didn't actually think anything through is what you're saying. He was just like, you know what? Let's just throw stuff up there. It doesn't matter. People will buy it. People are I, stupid. I'm sure the effects guys were sitting in like meetings with him. And he's like, yeah, put some elephants on the table. He, they probably want to eat <laughs> elephants because they're big. And the guys are like, it's England. It should only be like <laughs> livestock from England. Maybe ca maybe cows or sheep and sticks. Right, like where, where are they going to get the elephants from, bro? I don't understand. Are they coming down and carrying things back up their beanstalks? I just, I had. What is indigenous to the floating island, Dan? You see, what happens is a <laughs> okay. pigeon carries an elephant egg up mm -hmm. to there. Uh, an elephant egg? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there was a land bridge a long time ago okay. from Africa up to Jonheim and the. And Noah led, because that's the ark. John Time is actually the eggs. ark. He, so see, when Noah God, carried the elephant eggs. See, when God flooded the earth, <laughs> what happened was Noah built the ark, right? And then threw down two of the beans, and then it went up there. So every animal is up there. Oh, okay. So that's what happened to Noah. Okay. No. You know, Dan, I miss this. I miss your scientific explanations. <laughs> I I'm, feel like I'm it's been too long. I'm solving the movie. <laughs> so Ewan's like, I'm staying. By okay, here we go. This is one of the, the things I actually liked about the movie. Ewan's oh, like, great. I'm going to stay behind and, you know, poke Stanley Tucci and get the crown. I liked his sort of hiding place. And it really felt like he was way up high in the air. And it felt like real rocks. That's yeah. one of the things I liked about this movie. That's, oh my God, that's such a minuscule thing. <laughs> that's one of the highlights of the film to me. It felt like a real rock. <laughs> and it felt like it was high in the air. And it was of fell course, off. it's the two-parter. Two things, oh. two things together. <laughs> Both are very important. Oh, man. So the giant that with the bees falls down and they're like, Oh, sh Oh shoot. There's giants. So they start cutting down the beanstalk. And you're telling me that that giant's not going to kill anybody below. It, it wasn't time. They're crowded to... around this beanstalk. They're not, it's not like they have it roped off and be like, no one go, you know, closer than five feet. They're all dead. So the giant, they start climbing down. It, they take a long time because, you know, they, it takes a whole day to climb. Although going down is always much faster than climbing up. If I mean, you would think so. If gone to the top of a mountain. Um, <laughs> That's a big no. I have. Um, have you? Sure. I've been in the Andes. I've been all over the world. I'm world traveler. I, world Dan, I can't tell if you're being serious or not. I've been to I, 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 I walk to Machu Picchu. Which is like five thousand feet. Yeah, Machu Picchu. Do you know what that is? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. of course. I'm. I'm of course. I'm a, <laughs> of course. Of course. I'm Dan Goodsell. I've been to the pyramids. I've been all over the world. See, now I don't believe you anymore. You, I don't. I can't tell when you're serious, Dan. I don't like it. <laughs> no, I actually, I, I've been to Machu Picchu and I've been to the pyramids. I went to Egypt. That's cool, man. That's really cool. That's great. Egypt's really cool. That's Go great. to Egypt if you ever can. You won't. I went to great. Canada one time. That was wow, Canada. <laughs> Ooh, good job, Tony. Yeah, let fishing. me give you your, your badge of whiteness. Um, <laughs> I'm I will take it. Thank you. Yeah, that's the thing. When a it's kind of like when we were doing Love Guru, 
it takes a long time to really eviscerate a terrible movie because this movie is terrible. Yeah. yeah. You I'll know, t- we can we'll try to pick up the pace a little bit. Like Blue Lagoon, we're just like nothing happens. Over <laughs> this one, it's like nothing happens, but God, it's it's bad when it doesn't but, happen. But every step is terrible. So they're climbing down. It's nighttime. They have their sweet makeout moment. Talk about it, Tony. Terrible, awful. I don't want to kiss either of them, Dan. I 100. percent I'm not interested in either of their lips at this point. And I try to go in it with an open mind. I don't. I don't want to be like you know what you're ugly. I don't want to kiss you because some people can be really good kissers and not be all that attractive. I myself, for for example, I I find myself to be a very good kisser. I'm not great to look at, but these people not only aren't attractive themselves, they're clearly not attracted to each other. I'm not even sure they liked each other on this set. It's stiff and it's awkward and it's not fun. This is my favorite part ever. (laughs) So, yes, I wrote sweet moment and then I realized it was not a sweet moment, but I wrote it anyways. (laughs) So they're axing it They were going for a sweet moment. So they're axing it down. The giant army... And then the the big giant knows, so Roderick's like, let me go look down the hole. So he's climbing down the hole, and then Ewan attacks, and the giant knows. And then this, what about the floating knife? So the knife gets dropped in the water, and then it floats down. Yeah, what's it made out of, Dan? I mean, ostensibly, there's a hilt that is leather and maybe wood, which maybe could make it float. But Ewan McGregor, doesn't he catch it with his mouth? Yeah, and then for sure, wield the knife with his mouth to cut Stanley Tucci. If anyone can do it, it's a Jedi. So I buy it. There it is. Uh, floating mouth knife attack. Hang on. Uh, okay, so then the 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 beanstalk is going down, and we have this whole. We're not even... <laughs> Wait, what? No, what? It's did fine. Stanley Tucci die at this point? Yeah. And the well, giants I don't get know the if crown. How did he die? If he's dead, but he gets stabbed in the fugitive moment where he's hanging off of slippery wet rocks. I don't think so, first of all. And then he like gets him with the knife, and then Tucci's down. And yeah. then do the do the do they dig him out? They dig it. I think they just dig him out and then they then they, one, so big he man is takes dead, the crown. They dig so him out dead, and they yeah. pick him up. Yep, he's dead. And, and talk about a guy going neither of us really remembers that he died because he spends a lot it's of not time, a cool he spends a lot no, of time sorry. having been stabbed and kind of like crawling and it's just like it's weak it's not a like boom, yeah dead because it's, mo- like, it's not a moment it's not like a victorious moment where he's like yeah he got him it's just like it's drawn out. It's stupid. I don't care about anything. Yeah, there should have been a thing where where he's like, "I'm gonna get my giants," and then you and you know he hucks the knife. It hits his back, and we see him die. And then we see the giants freed of the control, and they're like, "Brah!" But the giants are all like, "Yeah, we're free of the that's, control." Yes, they that and that's why I'm so confused on what the control is because the difference between them under control and not under control is literally nothing. There's no urgency. Nobody really approaches anything with urgency except you and McGregor because you and McGregor cares. Because <laughs> so you and McGregor, so the beanstalk is going down. The they're like doing their thing, the two of them, and then you and makes the jump, so he's on the top of the beanstalk. They swing around, land in a haystack, almost yeah, get impaled I, by a thing. Ewan jumps off, lands in the moat, castle's destroyed. Wait a second. I just thought of something. Whoa, what? We have a whole thing at the end. Like it like literally crashes into the castle wall, doesn't it? And the But only a little bit. Oh, so they did it only Okay. But I mean yeah, couldn't the I giants... mean, the answer to could the giants have just oh, damn. The giants the could have done so many things because they're stronger than we are. And for some reason, A, that drawbridge, we'll, you know, we'll wait. Let, or do you want to just talk about it right now? Because that, <laughs> that battle scene drove me up a fucking wall. Okay. So, um, okay, so let's see. Save, save kids, ghost marching, king, jack. Oh, okay, so. We got 36 more minutes. So the oh princess the princess is saved. The king's like oh, right, because I thought this was the end of the movie. 
Oh, did you really think this was the end? I of the movie? genuinely thought this was the end of the movie, and I was like, "Okay, thank God that's over." And I checked my time, and it's like forty minutes. Of I was, "What in the hell is going on right now?" So that we have a whole thing with the king, and the king's like, "She's like, oh, that's Jack. Let him come back in." And then he comes in, and he gets a bag of money, and da 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 da. The king not acting like a king. And he never really acts like a king in this movie. Yeah. And you got Ian McShane and he's like this big softy. Yes. You uh, find Ian McShane, one of the greatest actors of all time, and you've used him like garbage. So so Jack goes back out and he's kind of put off, but he isn't even acting that put off that they sort of send him away. No, no he's just like, OK, cool. I'll just walk on my way. Just check it all out. And then the princess comes out and she's in like this full armor. Um. And this is the second thing of the movie that I liked. Shh, I thought that armor was very cute. Really? Yeah, I thought it was really cute. I, I just, it was really cute. and I think I might have been put off by all the other costumes, but when she came out, I was like, it's just so shiny. <laughs> like, the yeah. gold armor is so shiny. And it's fake, and it's, you know, we know it's not real, but I thought it was really cute. That was a cute little design to have her in little cute armor. Of course, it took them two minutes to put her in this armor that would have taken two yeah, hours to put her in. Clasp that up real easy, like a Halloween costume. And on the armor, she just, I, I, it didn't really go back, but there's like, like sort of a fake, sort of a chain mail thing looking, not chain mail, oh, really? but scale mail, which is just like, oh, okay. like printed cloth to look sort of like scale mail and you're just like what the hell are you doing like put her in some <laughs> scale up there don't just but you know you just like ah we don't need to go all out we're not going to really see this we're not going to get too close to it too often just just right. print, yeah, some, it's, it's print some fabric print on demand fabric you know whatever oh who my cares? god <laughs> but I, I, who cares I, I, indeed i thought it was a super cute little outfit and ewan's outfit was kind of interesting but it looked like it was made out of plastic too Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, it looked everything looked super fake. Nothing looked real. And I was I was very frustrated, which is really funny because they spend millions of dollars trying to make the giants look like they're dirty and real. And then all the human beings wear like this perfection material. Even even Jack, who is a peasant who works on a farm is totally clean he's got yeah he's got patches on his faux leather jacket or whatever but he's totally clean he's not dirty whatsoever and i i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure he's just wearing an under armor shirt underneath that jacket it's like a gray breathable material that looks similar to what i'm wearing right now just underneath his his peasant jacket and i was i was very upset about it jesus so the big giant up top somehow with his incredible giant eyesight can see a tiny tiny bag and somehow know that the magic beans are in there like yeah what the, May what the hell you know maybe he's got like a, a a bean sense you know he can feel the beans so instead of him throwing those in the river which you know this thing's this water's going down there we'll go down there we'll make more bean stalks and they can climb down instead Smart. he plants them on his magical land and then the giants all start jumping to make the bean stalks grow down down yep yep that's what they decided would happen <sighs> I almost turned it off at this point, Dan. This is, for the record, this is the first movie I've had to watch in two sittings. I oh, really? watched it, was so it last painful. night up until what I thought was the first ending. Saw that it was 40 more minutes. And I was like, you know what? I'll finish it in the morning. So I picked it up this morning and watched the second ending. So everyone just leaves. Once the beanstalk is down, all the king and everybody just, like, literally they pack up in, like, five minutes like five minutes we're gone tops <laughs> tops because they just <laughs> and where did everybody go because the there's only like 12 people riding on the horses towards the castle so where did everybody else go where's where's the whole fun fair packed up and going to I, there I would be know. there would be and that was the whole thing what is the key to an army <clears throat> the key to what an army a medieval army what is the key to medieval warfare 
Mel Gibson? Nope. Supply chains. Oh, shut up. <laughs> it's pretty good, though. Given that speech. I mean, I thought it was good. It didn't get the reaction I was hoping for. But well, because I was making my point. I wasn't really listening to you. I don't. Most of the sure, time, I'm not sure, listening to make, what you have to say. I'm, make your real I'm calculating, point, Dan. You know, I'm doing a Tony. I'm <laughs> writing all my jokes to get ready for the improv that's never coming. Um <laughs> <laughs> but supply your 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 supply chain and that's the whole idea and that's what the russians knew in world war ii is they salted the earth so it's like they always they made it you know what salting the earth is is it is it similar to what you do in the winter where you salt the streets nope. you just go up and down salting it melting the ice what the, what the russians did in world war ii is they put salt in all their in their crops so the crops would no longer grow. So basically they killed themselves off so that the Nazis wouldn't have any supplies. Oh yeah, no, the, what the Russians did in World War II is insane, but because they didn't but care about the people. Kind of badass. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, if you want to <laughs> win. So, so basically the Nazis had to have this huge supply chains to keep supplies going to this Russian sure. front that's, you know, so far away. It just screws you over. And at a certain point, the, you know, if you're attacking those supply chains, they all break down because you can't, you know, if there's no food up there, if there's no arm, you know. Yeah, what do you, what do you do? And so that's the whole thing is if you're breaking down an entire encamp war encampment or fun, fancy fun fair, that's going to take a whole bunch of time. A fancy a fun trip. fair. I want to go to a fancy fun fair, Dan. It sounds well, lovely. It's called the Renaissance Pleasure Fair, and they used to have them. <laughs> oh, sad. So uh, here's another thing I liked in the movie. Jack's like finally getting ready to leave, and he looks down, and in the water trough, he could see the beanstalks and the giants coming down. I wrote that too. I was it's like, nice this image. is the first cinematography shot that I've enjoyed in this entire movie. And I was like, cool. Good for you guys. You got one in there. Better, better than Check. none <laughs> so what and what do the giants do when they get to the ground they do superhero landings yeah it's pretty cool it's pretty cool i don't um mm -hmm. so jack's like oh i gotta warn everybody so he gets on the horse his his horse is magically there the horse that he lost to the monk wait I don't even know where that horse would have been. Well, did he lose? Because the monk didn't get very far. So that right? that horse would have been in the, they would have had it in the castle. In the castle. But somehow the horse is out. Yeah, it escaped. Maybe when the, yeah. maybe it climbed <laughs> over the beanstalk and, you know, it knew to come home. You know, it's like those, those classic stories about the dog and the cat that get left at the campground and then they travel 500 miles and meet like, old like tony sitting in his cabin how y'all doing i'll feed you your cat the dog and then he's like i mean oh, now are I'm you trying die. to describe Continue homeward bound generation. yes and then then tony's character eventually dies and they the cat like feasts on him and gets very large so it has the what's <laughs> necessary to make the rest of the journey home That's smart cat man here's it here's so so jack Jack is like, the giants are coming. The giants are coming. And he rides, yep. <laughs> he rides by, this is really good, a giant bell, which the monk Did begins he? to, oh yeah, this is one of my, one another thing. He rides by this giant bell and the, he, the monk starts ringing the bell. And then we cut to the king and the king's like, that's the bell. I've never heard that bell rung. I wonder why they just rung the bell. You're right. You're right. I didn't even I didn't even put this together. I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. But <laughs> that is the giant warning bell. The the giants are coming warning bell. Which no one has ever heard before or know what it does except for that one monk. That doesn't now, make any sense. Now, Tony, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. You're younger than me by about 100 years. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Do you know what um, if do you know what an air raid siren is? Of course, of course, w I've seen you, Pearl Harbor. Yes, you've seen movies. You have you're part of our culture. You would understand that the stupid bell says the giants are coming, right? 
or danger J- anything really like it doesn't have to specifically be giants but if someone's ringing the big bell outside of your it means there's danger everyone's confused. Yeah, like it's pretty clear <laughs> so the giants are running they come out of the forest they they're moving like a thousand miles an hour they catch up on these horse you know once again who knows and then the one guy throws and throws a windmill and that kills a bunch of people and then everybody gets inside this did jack get inside Oh, he jumps the horse. Jack is the last one in. Yeah, somehow Jack has fallen back behind because he was he caught up to tell them all that the giants were coming, right? But then he somehow falls behind and is the last person again. I didn't understand that. Pro- but Probably because his horse is tired. It was tired. Because it just came from the castle through the vine. And it's like, I just did this journey. What's going on? And he didn't properly water it and feed it when he first showed up the castle. Yeah, because he was too busy staring into the trough instead of <sighs> letting his horse drink. So they pour oil into the moat and then they light it really early, which seems like yep. you'd want to wait till they were there and you'd want to light it. Whatever. No, no, no. It's more of a warning sign, Dan, rather than, you know, like an actual effective maneuver. It's just kind of like, hey, we've got fire. And so Two Head comes in, and then he falls in the burning oil, and then, and so the so so yeah, so he falls in the oil, and then uh, Red Stick Hair, he's sort of in charge now. Which doesn't make any sense because doesn't Two Head still have the crown on? I don't under I just don't he understand still have complete control. the mind control. <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. Control. How can someone else give orders if they're still being controlled by someone else? Doesn't make any sense. Second thing that doesn't make any sense is Two Head then goes into the water and finds uh, ostensibly a sewer gate that he can somehow fit into. How big is this water pipe? Thousand miles. I don't understand. <laughs> sure seems like you wouldn't want to be building. You know why doesn't he just swim around the other side and come out? Yeah, who knows. Who knows? Because he wants to get in the I, castle. And how does he sneak into the castle and then we spend 10 minutes of war and he doesn't do anything while he's in there? Correct. And not only that, oh. but how does he get into the castle, Dan? He just breaks through the floor, through the stones. Great. I totally buy that. And yet oh. 30 giants outside can't break a wooden gate? What are you talking about? He's big, and then there's he's, one dude. He's the king, though. He's the king. Oh, so he's just stronger than everybody else. Everyone else is like, you know, a weakling. I, I'm going to back up a second. <laughs> okay, please. Did it bug you that he put the crown over two fingers and didn't just fit on one finger? Oh, yeah. yeah no, I wrote a note about that. You're right. We did skate right over that. Why? <laughs> First of all, I don't think that that math is right. Unless the crown can change sizes. When he grabs a human, one finger is it's, definitely bigger than a head. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty similar to a head. Not it's so not two, two fingers, fingers is like a, a full body because he's holding a human being like this. Yes, and so a head's gonna be, you know, about the size. It's of It's definitely ch- not two fingers worth. Not bigger than a cherry tomato. Smaller than a cherry tomato. <laughs> Maybe a smaller, cherry a tomato. smaller. Che- you know, no, you know the the tomatoes. <clears throat> you know. Those other ones. <laughs> what, are they, what are they called? You know, those tomatoes. Sort of, uh, yeah, an yeah, yeah. olive. A human's head's going to be about the size of an olive. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Which is about. It doesn't size make of a any it's sense. Not, it's not. I mean, the heads were not like this big because you'd have been holding them like yeah. this. They were. That would be. Hand. You'd be a bobblehead. And then also, how is he doing stuff? Because if, if you got these two fingers tied together, it's actually pretty hard to do things. Can't flip anybody the bird. <laughs> You really cut down on your options if you can't flip anybody the bird. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, so they have to go and light the beacon, a, a thing they never do. So she takes yeah. him on the shortcut, and we see the where Eric the Red was buried for some reason. That, oh, yeah, they go through the, the yeah, secret the grave catacombs. catacombs. There you go. So then we have like this one. Oh, and then he breaks through the floor and he's like run so we've got a machine gun arbalest we, we figure we need to have the machine gun arbalest and do a whole bit with that and then the giant has a giant slingshot to, to... yeah okay but when he does the giant slingshot dan yeah. it destroys part of the castle and like yeah. kills a bunch of people yeah and yet 
they can't pull down the fucking drawbridge. I can't. I'm so annoyed by this. We've got 20 humans over there pulling on a rope, somehow stopping 30 giants from pulling the rope down on the drawbridge. Also, is that drawbridge not just going to shatter at some point? That is a lot of weight on a drawbridge. Well, I mean, I don't know. You you know the X-Men. There's the whole thing where Colossus throws Wolverine. Yeah. Two yeah, of those yeah, yeah. giants could have like heaved another giant and he'd have been inside in one second. The giants yeah, could have just there's walked a ton up. Of ways. They could have just they actually could have just walked up, leaned over, pulled down that drawbridge, one of them very yeah. easily. They could also have walked yep. up there and with their little finger broken all the whatever. They they could have done a yeah. thousand things. And so yeah. many things. So the big the big two headed giant is in there, he grabs her, he grabs him. He doesn't think to just go like this. Like this is this is the movie is over if he goes like this. Yeah. No. No. He's I'm just not gonna doing that. I guess uh, eat them individually. Let, yeah, because you don't want to squish them. Let me talk to you for a while. Blah 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. He's got the I, yeah. if you get if you get grabbed and if that thing ugh, whatever. And then Jack throws a bean down his throat and he blows up. And it, it didn't it seem like this beanstalk was a thousand times larger than any of the other beanstalks. Yes. And I figured out why that is, Stan. It's because why? stomach acid is so much more potent than just water. That's, that's what it is. Science according to Tony. <laughs> I agree with it. I, I agree with it. So he comes out and... Yes, all the, they all bow down, and then he comes out, and I didn't even remember he held up the crown and puts yeah, it on. Yeah, he's, he's holding it victorious, and I was like, no, you don't have control over them yet, dude, now, according to the movie. If I, Dan Goodsell, had read this script, this is what I would have said to Brian Singer. Watch who you sleep with, and then the second thing I would say... <laughs> It's a little life, a little life lesson, and then also onto your script. <laughs> get that in first. Brian, check IDs. Come on, buddy. <laughs> I wasn't gonna go there, but I had to go there. I'd uh, say, what am I? What am I gonna say? I would say, here's my one note for your movie, and just do this, and then rewrite the whole movie based on this. The girl comes out wearing the crown. Why? Why wouldn't she? She's already royalty. One. And two, this guy is nothing. This, I don't know. This would instantly fix the, a lot of the problems with this movie and would be a blueprint for making this a good film where the the princess isn't just this, you know. <clears throat> <clears throat> Did you think the same thing when you saw it? Like she should be wearing the helmet? Or the I, I don't know. I thought that that's what was going to happen because, oh, okay. again, She's royalty already, and she has to have some sort of redeeming arc. Jack can still be the hero, sure, quote she's unquote. The hero. But she, yeah, she's the she queen. Does, she's she's nothing. She's a prop. She's a prop. So talk about the final the final stuff they do because I I can't. What final stuff do they do? The oh, this whole like ten minute montage where they again tell the story to their kids now and then they melt down the crown and put it into a different crown and then we transport to the future i assume present day ish and the crown is in some sort of museum in london i i don't why uh, well those are the those are the royal jewels that's the royal crown that's the crown of england so oh so that's like a real a real thing so they're saying that all of this really happened Uh And that the the lords of of England have been controlling the giants for centuries. Who the hell? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> but just the whole idea that this occurred in our world, and that the giant this giant thing is up there. You know, it's like we would have seven forty sevens crashing into that thing like every week. That's why. That's why I don't so understand st- how high it is. So I don't understand what part of the atmosphere oh, it's actually, in. Actually, I just solved. The, I solved it all. That's actually heaven. It's heaven. So we all do we all turn into giants? That's heaven. That's what heaven really is. Like the, the <laughs> all religions, of, all the all those religions got it wrong. <clears throat> That's heaven. 
So it's like it's, so what you're saying it's a different universe. is the monks in this movie were right the whole time and they'll never know. They'll never know that they were right. Those poor monks. Jack the Giant Slayer 2. We're going to find out what really happened. The I'm mo- still waiting. Uh, I'm still waiting for it. A monk's tale. <laughs> a monk's tale. Yeah. So the redeeming parts of this movie are the edge of the cliff seems like it's the edge of a cliff high up in the air. It's a cute little bit of armor and that one shot in the in the in the water the trough. trough. That's it. That's, yeah. That's I I like some things that uh you and McGregor sure. did. That's it. I don't even agree with most of the things that you just said other than other than the water trough. I agree with that. Is this the worst movie we've watched? I I I mean, it's hard because it's so fresh to really objectively see it but i can tell you that while i was watching it i definitely felt like this is the worst thing we've ever done i think new year's eve is worse it could be it could is this longer they're about the both the i same. guess they're, they're pretty close two yeah movies. Ugh. they're both tough tough movies to get through you just you go back and you're like i would much rather rewatch alone in the dark much more fun I, I well, uh, you know, I would because I liked Alone in the Dark. Oh, did you actually like Those Alone rock, in the Dark? The rock sequences with the ba 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 ba. I, I love it, man. I'm in. You know, I'm gonna watch that every year. And at least somebody has a bomb that they set for three seconds and then throw three feet away from them. I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. You've set it's a bomb fun. for it's three a fun, seconds. Stupid movie. And you've thrown it. Three, you you run into the kitchen. There's a bomb in the oven. I'm looking in the. I'm looking in the bomb. I'm looking for it. By the, by the way, there's a bomb in your house. You should probably go look for it. No. Yeah, just should, go find it. Go sh- find it. Before. I should probably leave my house. I should probably... Yeah, get out. Run, you idiot. Run. I should maybe look for my adoptive parents and try and save them from the bomb. No. I want to go look at the bomb. No, no. Because they're like spies. You don't like them anymore. Bomb! Okay, Tony. Do you have anything else to say about this, this gem? I just... I don't... I don't. Oh, so your one thing that you liked about the art direction was her cute armor. Cute little armor. Okay. I just want to say again, in general, visually, I didn't like any of the choices they made. Costumes, the sets, the CGI. Like, I don't even. I didn't like the way the giants looked. I thought they looked ugly, which I guess is the point. But I, I I don't know. I I didn't like any of it. So I, I hated this movie. I hated it. And it goes back to this whole thing of more that people sometimes think that more becomes more threatening, more becomes less threatening. And that's the yep. whole key is the bigger, you know, the more you make the aliens, the bigger the ship, it does not make you more demoralized. You just go, oh, they're going to have to do a trick or it's not going to be a satisfying mm-hmm. thing, you know, like beating the hell out of one dude that's standing right there in front of you is going to be a thousand times more satisfying than pushing a button and killing a thousand bad guys. Yeah. Always going to be better, you know, and, and all those classic movies, they realize that, you know, it's like, you know, when, when Arnold is holding that guy out over the cliff and he's like, you know, when I told you you'd be last, I lied. We're just like, win. Yeah. I, I Great. Re- yeah. Great stuff. I, a guy who, remembers very few lines i remember that whole line probably incorrectly but but you get that you got the gist of it yeah Yeah. either way you know did he shoot just two bullets or a thousand bullets you gotta ask yourself (laughs) that you know it's mano a mano it's not clint eastwood like ah look the entire spanish army i will beat them with this crossbow no it's dumb yeah and what did jack jack killed two giants two I still disagree, but yeah, ostensibly two. Really only one with the vine. That first guy's not dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> guy's not dead. He just got stabbed a little bit in the back. Now, Tony, you have the ring or the crown, and you have an entire army of mind-controlled giants. What are you going to do with them? Probably conquer the world. Yeah, I'd probably put them or I'd put them to work like building houses and like doing all these things for the poor. You know, I'd give back to the community. I wouldn't. I'm lying, Dan. I would take over the world. Yes. And when we look (laughs) back through the king, the British kings, how many of them 
spent their time trying to improve the living culture, the living status of their, their, their brethren. None of those, but also <laughs> a lot of wars happened. Yes. France would be knee deep in giants. Is right. What would happen <laughs> if England had an army of giants. <laughs> France. I mean, it's not oh, so dumb. Don't, don't tie it to modern day. You guys, you didn't think it through. You didn't think it through. That's the problem. Why would you die at the modern day? So stupid. <laughs> <sighs> Was this one really long? I feel like we've Two been hours. talking a lot about this yes, one. Yes, we've talked a lot. We've, we've, <laughs> we, we're back up to our 90 minutes. We're back up to our... Perfect. We're, we were getting Good. them down to an hour and 15. This one's right back up to an hour and 30. <laughs> We were being better. We, were, I know you know you look up and it's like, oh my god, we've probably been talking for about an hour. I'm like, oh god, we're, yeah, easy, we're on page easy. three of six. It's like, <laughs> oh my god. But this movie was that bad. It really was that bad. It needed it. Yeah, I needed it just to like cleanse my soul from this viewing experience. <sighs> Brutal. So, talk to me about something you like this week, Tony. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> easy for me. Oh. This week was the season finale of The Mandalorian. Everyone's saying a lot of positive things. Is season two better than season one? It, I, I think no, but it depends on how you look at things. I like one better because it's like an independent Star Wars story in the universe, but doesn't really connect much to anything. Like there's little Easter eggs. But season two is all about like, how it kind of weaves into the overarching story. And this, the finale has like a really cool moment that I'm not, obviously not going to spoil, but spoil it. Do it. it's cool. It's cool. I'm not going to spoil it. Okay. I'll spoil it to you after we're done. If you really want to know. Yeah. But... Cause I probably won't watch it. I didn't make it through season one. So. Oh, wow. Dan, I watched Mr. Grinch over there. I watched like the first two episodes and I watched the last episode and I was like, eh, that's enough for me. <laughs> I mean, Baby Yoda is like literally the cutest thing anyone has ever created. They up the cute factor in season two because they're like, oh, we should exploit that a little bit more and sell more toys. Oh, okay. So well, he's, he does he does more cute things. Well, maybe I'll watch a little bit of it. So uh, continuing in the Disney Plus uh, thing, we just we just we just started streaming, and so I got the Disney Plus, and I'm you know hunting on there trying to find things, and so what what do we end up? What's the well, the second thing we were watching, the other thing was crazy. I won't go into that. That Darn Cat. <laughs> the original That Darn Cat. That Darn Cat. Which is one of these classic Disney kids movies. And it's just, they're so stylized and so interesting to watch. There's lots of weird... Do you know, what year is this? I... Oh, it's Haley Mills' is kind of adult, so it's probably like... 71 maybe 72 okay maybe i've, I've never seen I this guess. so I'm, I'm intrigued um you know like there's bank robbers and there's like this siamese sure. cat that just walks around town it's like lots of dumb <laughs> bits it's like great okay but there's like if you've ever watched like these older disney movies the lighting is super particular the sets are super particular sure. they it's just it just feels different, you know? It almost feels yeah. like you're watching a movie from a different existence. And they, you know, they really codified this thing. And then at a certain point, it just was gone. You know, just like they never made a movie like this again. Um, and so it's, it's, always, it's always interesting to me. So, Tony, uh, continuing on the, our month of Schlockbusters, uh, hit us up with something good. Dan, I've got a real treat for you today. And by treat, I mean it's my treat, so don't worry about it. Uh, I'll get it so you can watch my copy. I just felt like, since we've talked about it a bunch, that we we just have to do Tenet. We have to. So oh, I will buy it, and I'll give you my password, and you can watch it on my account, because I've already bought it. <laughs> now, what, how, do you, how did you buy it? On Voodoo or something weird? Yeah. It is on Voodoo. I yeah, like how for, you're uh, 1999. I like how you're talking about a crime that you're going to commit. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't think is the that... authorities are watching our podcast, and if they do, you know, more power to us. FCC, suck it! Yeah, yeah, get out of here, you idiots! Yes. Um. Wow, we're gonna do Tenet. 
Yeah, well, we're gonna do it, man. Schlockbusters. Yeah, well, you just you just want see. That's you should have waited on this until we do torture I month. I thought because, about it. Oh well, you can always just make me watch Interstellar again, and then I, I will like hate you more I, than anything. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to. That's on the list. I'll tell you that. I don't know if I'm picking it because I do have a couple others that I like a lot, but uh, I just don't know if this movie's going to be that bad. So I don't want to. Like on the off chance that it's okay, I don't want to waste that on my hate month. I will say this: I don't think it's going to be as bad as Interstellar. Because Interstellar I, can it, <laughs> but also I was looking at the the length of Interstellar. This is it's, like two and a half hours. Or something. It's so long, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it, I don't know if I want to put myself through that again. We'll see, we'll see, we'll we'll see what's uh, going on next we're month. In the magic library. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, wouldn't it? Oh man. Well, you're definitely making a case for it, though. So there's Why that. Am I doing but so this? next week, <laughs> see, I've already given you all my my ammunition. I the I don't have the Tony ammunition. I don't know what you hate so much. I don't know what you. I hate. hated this movie, Dan. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Jack the Beanstalk Two. We're doing it again. <laughs> just yeah, just a repeat. Not even a second movie. Same movie, second you time. Ask your wife. She's gonna tell me that you sat through and watched it. Oh my god! So next week we're doing Tenet. I'm very excited. Uh, we kind of have. We do haven't it. really done a brand new movie, and then the one after that is going to also be a brand new movie. I'm very excited. This is going to be good. A good strong way to end. Fresh things. Because Tenet was going to be my, one of my two for this month. It was going to be Tenet and the other movie. So I think, but we, it's just hard to get. We need to do Tenet. Someone, someone yeah. has to. I'm ready. Someone has to do Tenet. Uh, Whew, I feel it's very, this episode felt very cathartic. I feel like I that's what I'm for my soul, man. I I was I was cranky all morning, and now I feel like I light as a feather. I feel great. Yeah, it's not like after I might even go outside today after you know beating up on hottie and the naughty. I didn't feel good because June is so beautiful. I mean, you're not wrong about that. You're not wrong. Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. I never know how to actually say his name. Ewan McGregor. He's also beautiful. It's kind of sad that you put a movie in him where he is very attractive and very swashbuckling and and they it never allowed us to enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really upsetting. Yeah, because you know, Moulin Rouge, one of my favorite films of all time. Me too. God damn. I mean, we talked about it. You you have to turn that yeah. movie off before the end because you're just gonna cry Obviously. like a baby. That's a given, yeah. I mean, think about think about because they live happily ever after. That's exactly what happens. <laughs> they, they there's a cure for tuberculosis, and they <clears throat> go off into the sunset. They just drive. Away. I don't even know what that disease is, so don't worry about it's it. Called All right. tuberculosis. Nope, it's nope, it's not. No thing. It's called a common cold. <laughs> She's got a common cold. It's seasonal allergies. All fine. <laughs> <laughs> and one of John Leguizamo's greatest roles, also. Amen. That and the pest, you know, I don't think right I've up there at the, the top. Pest. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not, not good. That it's good. not good. <laughs> no. Have you ever watched? Fun. Have it's you ever watched dumb. any of his uh, his uh, stage plays slash uh, what you call it? It's one man show. I watched the one that came out towards the beginning of the, uh, the more, pandemic. The more recent one, all about his yeah. family suing him. <clears throat> yeah, yes. Yeah. They're great. I love them. They're just he's I, no I I I'm a big fan. He's a genius. Um, yeah. Sometimes it goes horribly wrong, but he's a genius. Sure. Okay. He's trying stuff. So we're gonna do, do Tenet. This has been hate watching with Dan and Tony. Uh, hate watching of Jack the Giant Slayer. Um, uh, Schlockbusters continue. Uh, if you like this, like it, subscribe it. You know, tell your friends. Take it to your knitting club. Um, you know, just do those things. What is our demographic, Dan? Uh, our demographic is no one. No one. Okay, got it. It's funny. Got we it. we got we just got a bump on whatever our last one was on Silent Light Deadly Night, and YouTube was oh. giving us recommendations. So we, you know, we caught like two or three hundred views, and it's like you know the retention is like five minutes. They're like people turn it on and they're like, oh, <laughs> what the hell? Why? What right? are we watching? And you can get out. tell what happens is with the suggestions. I'm sure if something does well, it keeps suggesting it. 
we, yeah. you know, we have this nice little curve where like they, they look at the analytics, you know, the robot that makes those decisions and the robot goes, no, no not these guys. They're done. They're out. <laughs> I gave you a shot, guys, and you you fucked it up. <sighs> so beautiful. Well, <laughs> thanks, everybody. Say, say goodbye, Tony, and say thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time. Hey, watch it!